All right, so I've actually gotten a lot of uh, questions about how I do the seams on, or many people have asked me how I get the rings, how I make the endless rings. They assume that these have no seam. Most of them, I have made one that has no seam. I've made a few. They're, they're, they're tough. They're a lot harder to make. You have to drill a billet open. Now, the problem, I'm not opposed to doing that. They're actually kind of fun, but it's prohibitively expensive with gold. Because you're going to have to cut off. It's not that you're going to waste the material because you'll get it back. But you're going to have to purchase and start with a lot more material because a lot of it gets cut off. So this is an unconventional medium. If you're not going to go that route and you're going to solder it shut, you must have an unconventional approach. So as you can see, the seam on that is diagonal. It matches up with the pattern. Now if, you're, if, it, if it comes out good and you're clean, it, it'll be pretty much indistinguishable from the pattern. You got to use the right type of solder, obviously. Now, with this, I'm going to be using silver solder. Uh, I actually do... Some, they'll tell you if you're ever soldering silver to gold, just use silver solder. I use... I do a lot of etching. And pour a lot of acids on stuff. So, I actually prefer the gold solders. But for this... I'm actually not going to etch this ring. So, it'll be fine. My hands are messed up. All right. So, as you can see, this uh, seam is pretty good. It needs to be a little... straightened out a little bit more. I'll tap that down with a hammer. So, bear with me. I set that with the mallet, gotten it at the place. Um, now it's just a basic soldering job. The only thing is you want, you got to be mindful that the, it doesn't just run straight down. If you do a seam this way and you put the solder here, that's where the seam is. So let me show you the seam again. Seams are right there, runs bottom to top. So that's the tip. If this was a straight up and down scene, you could put the you could put the solder right there, and you would know you've gotten at least three quarters of it. Flip it over to the other side. Same thing with with this, but you may not get anywhere near that much. You may just span it across the top. If um, it's the way you've probably if you've been soldering for a while, your muscle memory tells you to do it a certain way. You've got to push the heat not just into the seam. You've got to push it down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by heating this area. And then I'm going to circle around that way, get that area hot. When I see that the solder is starting to, ju to, to, to jumble a little bit, then I'm going to come back this way. From there, I will get that nice and hot. And when I reach the solder element, it will melt. It'll, it'll, it'll pour right into the seam. And because I'm coming from this area, it will follow the heat. It will travel down into the seam. So, let's begin. First, uh, where's my flux? Uh, okay, let me assemble stuff, and we'll be, there we go. Flux and flux. I know, I'm a mess. Don't do this the way I do it. Uh. There it is. Okay. Let's see what we got. Yep, right through the seam. Uh, let me. Okay, we'll flip it over now and do the other side. Beautiful.
Alright, that's tied it shut. Indeed it is. Alright. Yeah, nice and tight. Alright, results video coming up in a minute. Alright, so. As you can see. Or maybe you can't. Let me get you a better view. I gotta tap it down a little bit, but it's nice and soldered shut. So we're gonna get going from there. New ring coming up today.